Alright, how's it going everyone? Thank you for joining me on a new episode of the Music Review Podcast. My name's Josh, and yeah, today we're doing a new album review on the uh, album review series, the ongoing album review series. This is episode 51, and uh, yeah, this is going to be over the latest Kings of Leon album titled When You See Yourself. The album was released on March 5th, so uh, yeah. Uh, I've been meaning to get to this album. Honestly, maybe should have gotten it to it sooner, but uh, here it is for you guys if you are interested in this album review. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this album today. If you're uh, new to the music review, thanks for joining me. My name's Josh. I'm just a guy that likes talking about music. And uh, yeah, this is uh, just one of our mini album reviews. And just for anyone listening, I just want to let everyone know the last album review was over the latest Julian Baker album, uh, Little Oblivions. Uh, thought that album was fine. Uh, a bit of, you know, thoughts here and there. Uh, if you're interested on my thoughts on that album, listen to the album. I think it's worth your time listening. But um, also listen to that review if you're interested in what I had to say about the latest Julian Baker album, the very talented singer-songwriter Julian Baker, and also an episode of Best and Worst Track of the Week dropped not too long ago, uh, Silk Sonic uh, versus Florida Georgia Line, and Nelly ended up being the case. Uh, of course, Florida Georgia Line and Nelly being the worst track of the week with a you know pretty um, subpar remix of an already... Uh, existing Florida Georgia line track, I think. So, uh, yeah, not too flattering on that one. And Silk Sonic being best track of the week on um, that wonderful collab that we've got uh, between Bruno Mars and Anderson Peck. Um, if you're wanting some commentary on those tracks, also some other tracks from Juice World, uh, that uh, one track he that was just remixed with Clever and Post Malone covered that. Uh, a little dirt track, some Rune Five and Megan the Stallion, Little Baby, Justin Bieber, uh, Rick Ross and Drake. Uh, so that Drake EP that came out, some tracks covered on that episode too. So yeah, last episode of Best Worst Track of the Week is up. If you want to listen to it on whatever you're listening to now or YouTube. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to the gist of this album review. Like I said, this is uh, a Kings of Leon album review for the your latest album. And just a little bit of background, just in case you are maybe don't know about Kings of Leon. Hey, I mean, they're a pretty big band, but uh, yeah, for whatever it's worth, uh, they're formed in Nashville, Tennessee, 1999. Um, Kings of Leon, their early material was pretty different to what it is today. Uh, they had a bit of a rough around the edges sort of style and sound to them uh, with some southern rock influence and style and uh, mainly like centered around like typical blues and classic rock. Um, and their, their earlier success is pretty interesting, I'd say, especially for being an American rock band up until maybe releasing their well-known track, Sex is on Fire, uh, which was on their uh, fourth album, Only by Night. Did the band really start to get any major recognition in the United States? I'm sure before that they had some, you know, pretty devoted fans that maybe they had it, Kings of Leon, as their best kept secret, uh, before that. Uh, but yeah, they're a pretty um, underground band, I'd say, in the United States before that happened. Uh, much of their earlier success actually can be credited to their fan base in the UK. Uh, their first three albums peaked in the top five of the UK albums chart. And uh, they also have two Brit Awards, which is like the British equivalent of the Grammys. And the band's newfound success in the US only grew um, after releasing Sex on, Sex on Fire uh, with... You know, another major hit following titled You Somebody. I'm sure if you own a car with the radio or if you were just alive in the, you know, 2010s, um, you probably know that track. Um, it, that track dominated, like, basically U.S. contemporary radio at the time. And it's still being played on several top 40 and variety radio stations today. Or if you're just going about shopping somewhere, I'm sure if they're playing music, you might run into that song here and there. Um yeah, so the band has been pretty consistent since, I'd say. Uh, they've won four Grammys by this point. They sold out countless arenas, I'm sure, and continue to sell a decent amount of records. Uh, their mainstream success has died out a bit, though, with mainly diehard fans and maybe music, ser music nerds like myself honestly being the only ones that care at this point. 
I don't know if that's like 100% factual, but that's just kind of a gist I have about what the state of Kings of Leon at this point. But I'd say that fate really happens to pretty much any band eventually at some point. Uh, and the band for me has been uh, one that I've enjoyed over the years with my interest probably peaking sometime in my college years. When I saw them a few times, um, one at Time at a Festival and one at, when they're headlining a show. And I remember first being introduced around uh, the time Sex is on Fire came out. I was still pretty young. Um, I think I was, I don't know, maybe around middle school age. Maybe a little bit younger. I think middle school is a fair bet. Uh, and I admittedly learned how to play that song guitar when I was like in high school. And I never really got that much more into them, honestly. Until sometime like in my later years when I was about to go to college, I discovered the early work. Uh, specifically from like Youth and Young Manhood, their debut album with tracks like Molly, uh, Molly's Chambers and California Waiting. I was just really into those tracks. Another track, Tally in the Sky, was also pretty fun discovering as well. And then also they have some pretty cool Savage tracks that really uh, exemplify how they were when they were younger, uh, such as Holy Roller Novocaine. And along the way, I found some more tracks that I gravitated towards, like On Call or Taper Jean Girl. Uh, nonetheless, I've done my fair share of listening to this band, and over the years, um, yeah, they, they've just been there uh, consistently releasing music. Uh, so what is it like now listening to them? And yeah, so what is it like listening to them and, uh, you know, in 2021, um, in a new decade, and a few years since they last released an album, which was actually in October 2016 with the album Walls. Uh, and to be honest, I haven't really listened to the band since then that much. Um, and uh, I kind of haven't really thought about them. So uh, it's kind of weird, especially thinking about how long it's been since they released an album. It's been five years. So uh, yeah, it's it doesn't seem like it's been five years, but uh, actually, I'm sorry, I can't do math. Four years. Um, anyways, four years. And it has. It doesn't really feel like four years, honestly. Um, and uh, going back to Walls specifically, um, the, especially coming into like the first track that comes on, Waste a Moment, uh, it felt really familiar to come back to. I can finally remember the track being pretty prominent in Indian Alt Radio at the time. Uh, it was released, and it was also a familiar because it carried with it the typical Kings of Leon sound and charm in the track. And then going into other tracks, I even forgot the catchiness of the chorus and the track Reverence. Around the World's uh, guitar, uh, opening guitar material seemed like it was trying to keep up with the indie pop sound at the time, kind of like what Walk the Moon was maybe doing uh, when it, they were more popular. Uh, the track Find Me is a track that definitely stands out. I think it's probably my favorite track off of that album. And the smooth transitions all throughout this track uh, that are mainly driven by a simple guitar riff um, really paints a clear picture of what Kings of Leon is really good at. And that's just making solid rock songs uh, that don't try to be too flashy. Um, another track, Muchacho, was a bit of a curveball in the overall discography of the band. The slow, tropical, laid-back country style that was executed decently, but I'm not sure why the band really needed to do it. Um, and that sound really doesn't show up at all in the new album that I'm about to cover here. Um, although there is like a little bit of Americana flair in When You See Yourself, but we'll get to that in a sec. So yeah, overall I thought Walls was a pretty decent album. I will say... Um, I do like listening to the previous album, The Artist, just to like see what they were at and what they're going into. Um, when You See Yourself is a bit of a different turn. It's uh, it's This album's a lot more subdued. It's a little bit more dreamier. I'd say it really takes a little bit of testosterone out of like whatever was left when they first started. This is like probably their most laid-back, chilled uh album overall that maybe incorporates actually a lot of synth work um for some reason uh so it's a slightly less guitar centric but it's very much so a, a kings of leon album that is pretty much at the end of the day a rock album um and um do i enjoy when you see yourself a little bit more than walls um i can't really say that i think i do um, after listening to this album a few times and that might just wind down to me not liking this direction as much as like the band's previous work I feel like when you're a fan of a band uh, sometimes uh, it's a little bit risky uh, listening to a band and do something different because obviously you're accustomed to what they've done before and that's why you like them in the first place 
Uh, but if I'm just being objective about this album, it's not bad, honestly. Um, the opening track, uh, When You See Yourself, uh, Are You Far Away, I thought it was a nice opener. Uh, it's patient and it's guided by some more some warm bass that later transitions to the main gist of the track. Um, and later we get just a very punchy bass groove that stretches the track overall. I, I do dig that sound for the most part. And the track feels organic at least. Uh, there are some nice ambient moments on the bridge of the track that create a really cool uh, build up overall. Uh, and it's not bad. There's a refrain on here. Um, One more night will you stay here is the line. Uh, that's executed quite well. It makes the track uh, become more, I guess, energetic and, you know, builds up on that line the more it's sung. Um, but we re really don't get to a highlight until the next track, The Bandit, which is one of the singles of this album. And on this track, I love how the main uh, guitar riff just naturally merges into this track. Um, and there's an interesting take on mixing in the vocals uh, with this track and other parts of the album. Uh, Caleb's vocals just sound a bit low on here, especially on the chorus section where the main refrain he sings. Um, it just sounds a bit blended in with the rest of the guitar textures. Um, I don't know, it creates a decent effect overall. I'm not sure if that's what they were going for. Um, but I feel like it's it kind of just makes everything on par with the guitar work and the guitar textures thrown on this album. I mean, specifically on this track. Um, so, I don't know if they're just aiming for the track to be very guitar-y, if that's even a word. Uh, but I do dig the track's rugged nature with the simple guitar instrumentation all throughout structuring the track. Uh, it really gives an organic rock sound overall, and it's a, it's a pretty decent song. I'd say it's um, a good song overall for Kings of Leon uh, in terms of like their singles. I'd say this is on par with most of them. And on this track, 100,000 People, uh, this is just a track that I feel is like a good example of what changes they've done on this album. Uh, the track overall can be a bit sleepy, but if you, it seems like it could have been trying to go for something more that leans on like a dreamier indie style, a la Mac DeMarco or something, um, My Kind of Woman, that kind of track. Um, it just sounds a little bit more like laid back, more uh, towards like aiming to build a certain sound or texture in the overall grand scheme of things. Um, there's some fuzzy synths thrown in coloring the track. And um, this track, don't get me wrong, does fit the mold of like a typical slow burner Kings of Leon track. Uh, but it just it goes in a different direction where I feel is just like maybe not leaning as much as like some typical alt rock style um, with like a driving guitar riff. It's, it definitely seems like it's a little bit more patient um, and just maybe dreamier, for lack of a better term. Uh, the next track, Stormy Weather, I actually didn't really find it to be that uh, that good in the context of the rest of the album. Uh, the track just lacks a certain prominence to it. It's kind of just hangs around. I would have honestly liked to heard more done with this track, like in terms of like how it progressed or what ideas were thrown in. Um, but it starts out like uh, energetic and there's some interesting moments with like a melodic bass line. The tr track just kind of doesn't really hit the mark. And on the track A Wave, uh, I actually dig this track overall. Um, it's pretty uh, drawn out in terms of how it's structured. Um, but it does do uh, more um, in comparison to like a traditional low key and slow paced Kings of Leon track. The track is also coated with some bright and organic piano for one, but it kind of uh, ends up being a bit more lush as some quirky electronic elements uh, that help build up the track as well appear. But the track just does develop a bit strangely. Um, by the time we get to like the second chorus, the track is pretty much almost complete just because of how long and strung out the first and second uh, verses are. Uh, and then there's a very kind of put together outro, I'd say, that maybe kind of fills in the place of like what would be a bridge. Um, but it just kind of feels like it was just written in to end the song. I just feel like it could have been developed a bit differently uh, than how it was actually done in the final cut. Um, because overall, it could have been a very pretty grandiose, huge track. It just missed maybe like a more, uh, I guess, cathartic uh, climax or something, uh, but it's an interesting track overall. 
Golden Restless Age, I do think, is a pretty solid track as well. There's some fuzzy synths that come back that are kind of coming in all throughout the album. Uh, this time, guiding the track with being uh, the op- opening melodic material. Um, there's some nice, brief, conversational guitar passages. And the track does accomplish obtaining this light nature to it, especially in the chorus where we have a light guitar riff and uh, the synths combining to have this airy color to it. Uh, It's not a bad track. Some nice instrumental passages as well. Um, And then also in the bridge, there's a nice ugly guitar tone. Uh, That's a nice touch as well. That's kind of like the focus of the track at that point. Uh, It might be a bit sleepy at times, but overall it's a nice track. Uh, Don't really get a uh, another uh, highlight until the track Supermarket. I feel like this isn't the only track named Supermarket by this band, but I guess this is it. Uh, there's a dry guitar texture on this track that's a bit uncharacteristic of Kings of Leon for the most part. Also, the track feels a bit skeletal, empty at times. The bass on this track just doesn't sound as rich and big as other other tracks, for instance. And the track kind of just like lingers for the most part. Uh, Maybe it had a bit more potential, uh, but I think it aims more at being like aesthetically pleasing than just like overall executed, uh, you know, to its full potential. Um, The next track, Clarinetti, is interesting. It's automatically a bit more vibrant than the previous track. Uh, There's some like Americana like aesthetics on here and pacing. Um, but yeah, it, it also features, uh, some dreaminess, some light dream pop influence maybe, uh, but overall the track is pretty pleasing. I don't mind this side of Kings of Leon. They could have maybe played around with this a bit more overall on this album and it kind of blends in and fits into their Southern roots a bit well on this track. So yeah, not a bad track on Claire and Eddie, uh, echoing definitely throws in so much needed energy by the time this track hits though a lot of these track a lot of the tracks thus far have been a bit sleepy uh, i don't mind the galloping nature on this track and it kind of leans this track kind of leans more on like some typical feel good indie rock norms that maybe peaked in the 2010s for some reason this track kind of just takes me back to that um whatever i don't have much to say it felt a bit incomplete uh fairy tale is the ending track here the last track uh, there's some nice psych influence on this track, some ambience. Uh, I dig the effect on Caleb's voice in this context. Like I said earlier, a lot of the tracks felt a bit buried. Uh, his voice felt a bit buried or sounded a bit buried. In this context, it's interesting enough to where whatever effect they're throwing in, it just sounds like another instrument. or just It just makes the track more colorful. Um, I dig the dirtiness of the effect-driven guitar that coats this. It's a bit shoegaze-like. Uh, and it's not a bad track. I dig the richness of the acoustic guitar that structures this whole thing. Uh, and it just, this track is just nice and lush and it's a nice ending to this album. I can, um, I can definitely say a lot of bands have not been getting that right, uh, on several albums I've reviewed, uh, recently that the endings of the albums are just, uh, boring or, un- uh, they're just forgettable. Uh, and this, uh, on this album, I'd say that's not really the case. They really, um, put in one of the better tracks on the very ending. So kudos to Kings of Leon for making that right. And I just feel like a lot of these tracks are very good on their own, but in the context of the album, maybe they're just a bit off. Maybe they're trying to experiment a little bit differently track to track, and it just wasn't a huge concise body of work. Um, but there were some nice highlights Uh, Some slight speed bumps over the way, but uh, I think this is a solid album by this band. Like I said, I don't think it's as good as Walls, uh, but I would recommend any person that has or likes this band or has listened to this band and likes this band to definitely check out this album because there's there's a side of Kings of Leon that uh, we we never really gotten uh, on this uh, on this track on on this album at several points. So. Uh, do I think it's worth uh, your time if you if you dig this band or if you're just even slightly interested? Yeah, um, but I don't think it's really as good as their previous work or a lot of their previous albums, unfortunately. Uh, but that could just mean this band is um, you know kind of trying to find a, a what works. You know, uh, after putting out so much material, at some point you're not gonna uh, make a masterpiece every single time. But this is certainly a good album. Um, if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. I was feeling kind of like on the 5 side, um, but rating doesn't really matter all too much. I think I enjoy this as much as like I enjoyed the last Django Django album. So uh, yeah, kind of around in that ballpark if you uh, 
if you listen to that album for me at least. Uh, but yeah, uh, not a bad album. But yeah, if you're just a rock music listener in general, this album's going to feel a bit different than maybe what you're expecting Kings of Leon to put out at this point in time. Uh, this definitely leans on more of like a aesthetic sort of uh, sonic uh, focus where they're trying to achieve a certain sound and they're not really just trying to make hard-hitting, fast-paced rock tracks uh, consistently. Uh, but yeah, this is a cool direction. Maybe they can develop it a bit more. Maybe they'll just revert back to what they're really fucking good at doing next album. Uh, we'll see. Uh, anyways, thanks for uh, listening to this review uh, and sticking with me to the end. Uh, if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe if you dug the review. Uh, comment anything you'd like, good or bad, honestly, or subscribe on your preferred listening service. My name is Josh. Uh, I'll see you guys later and take care of yourselves.